got to gotta get Spadoni up here one time. You guys do not know how funny he is. OK, so our next guest is a Zappos mobile web developer. But you also created an app called Dog Park Finder, which helps dog collisions, which not a lot of people focus on around here. Yeah. And you're just yeah. a general fixer of everything in life. So please, let's put our hands together and welcome Chase Adams. Thank, Thank you. you very much. <laughs> Mr. Charles. Okay, so we invited you on the podcast because we actually were at the All Hands event, this big Zappos kind of uh, quarterly meeting, and you were up there talking about the fact that you quit the job and you wrote this huge manifesto about it. And I thought some of the lessons that you talked about were really applicable for more than just internal Zappos employees, but really just anybody who's an entrepreneur or like working hard to accomplish something. So if you could just give us a rundown, like what was this big manifesto uh, about and how can we relate it to the downtown community? Yeah, so. Um... <clears throat> I mean, basically, yeah, I, I kind of had gotten frustrated with a lot of uh, things at Zappos. Like, Zappos is an amazing place. Like, it's, it's got great culture. Um, uh, the people are amazing. But uh, there were things that felt broken. And so I would kind of made a decision that I was going to go to the Bay Area. Um, oh, or get, oh, keep talking. Yeah, just keep yeah talking. no problem. Yep. OK, go ahead. Uh, go to the Bay Area and uh, pursue being an engineer. Um, and so I put my two weeks notice in, and uh, every night I was, I was having trouble sleeping. And then uh, one night I woke up at around 1 and uh, started to write some bullet points for my exit interview. Oh, and 1 a.m. wake up. That's where yeah, all the best stuff gets written. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, you know, it's one of those things, like, sometimes <laughs> you just wake up and you're like, crap, I need to write. Uh, so <laughs> I started writing bullet points. And then uh, by around 5 o'clock, like, it was a, a long Evernote document about, um, Things that I was frustrated with, things that other people had had mentioned their frustrations about, and uh, it you know to be honest, like it was it was honest and it was a little bit it wasn't brutal, but it was it was very raw. Um, so I wrote that for my exit interview, and I sent it to a few of my peers, and they asked if they could share it with some people, and I was like, yeah, share it with whoever. Um, but it started like making its rounds, and then eventually, oh uh, yeah. yeah, so. Uh, Tony and Fred got it um, before I kind of had intended for them to get it. And uh, I got an email one morning, and they're like, hey, so we thought what you said was really interesting, and we'd like to pursue it. Um, but we wish you would come and talk to us about it first. And I was like, all right, well, we'll see what happens. So, um, so your heart was just beating like crazy? Yeah, I mean, you know, you don't have. Very, or you're at the door, you don't care. I, I didn't have you know. very many scary moments in my life, but it's kind of scary <laughs> when your CEO's right. like, "Hey, uh, got this thing that you wrote that was kind of brutal about uh, the organization," um, but it was actually really cool because he he wasn't uh, a jerk about it. He wasn't you know cold or, or distant. It was just like, "Hey, we get that there are some things that are broken, and if you want to fix them, let's talk about it." Um, so before, what they said was like, let's get together and meet. So before we actually met, I decided, you know, they kind of gave me the, the artistic license to, to see things through. So I decided to retract my um, two weeks notice and made sure with them that that was cool. And they're like, whatever, you stay. Like, we want you to be here if you want to help change. So uh, we got together and met. And uh, we talked about a lot of these things. And it, it actually turned out to be really cool because I, I went from being like a full-time mobile engineer um, to kind of helping people to pursue growth and, and to, to kind of put themselves out there um, you know, at work and say, like, this is, this is me. I'm being vulnerable. Yeah. So it was, it was really cool. OK, so what, so what do you think you symbolize to the other people in the company? Or like, what are you trying to kind of get a message from them sort of up the chain? Yeah, so I, I think for me, like, it's def it's hard to get to get the courage to tell anybody that you kind of report to that something's broken, right? Like it's and it's not even that. It's just in rel relationships in general. Like you want things to be smooth, so um, maybe you don't bring your full self to to relationships or to work or uh, to anything. So one of the things that I've been uh, really trying to do is like helping people to just be courageous to to say things because. At the end of the day, like if you have great ideas and uh, there are things that can make something that it's it's not bad, but it could be better. Um, mm -hmm. Everybody wants that, right? So like if we if we bring that to the table and we take our egos out of out of conversations and we really say like, I want Zappos to be this, right? Um, and everyone says it. Then at the end of the day, like 
you've, you've made the place better. And it's not something that we should be afraid of, right? Like you shouldn't be afraid to say what can make a, your work better if right, it right. could make your work better. But it's like this corporate culture. It's how things are. It's like I'm not going to uh, say that, um, you know, I couldn't talk to my manager or I'm not going to say that, like, maybe this thing's not working because someone broke it and we aren't looking at it. Right. So um, it's really kind of just like, you know, let's be vulnerable and put ourselves out there. Okay, so is it something that you think that only happens inside big organizations? So we have a lot of small business entrepreneurs. Like, what are the kind of parallels that an uh, independent entrepreneur could maybe take from this lesson? Yeah, so uh, I've before Zappos, I'd always worked in small businesses. And we kind of had the luxury to, um, if something wasn't working, to get in a room together and, and almost like duke it out without actually anybody getting physically violent, but to just, you know, <laughs> just have conversations. Um, I, if you're in a smaller organization, or even if you're just starting things up, like create a space where people can, can be vulnerable or uh, create a space where it's okay to make mistakes or it's okay to, to, uh, to experiment with things. As long as you take those learnings and you do something with them um, and you grow, like that, that to me is one of the really cool things that you can take. And then to like, ed, when you have a small operation, like make sure people are talking because I think a lot of times what ends up happening is, is uh, you get an organization that grows to 15 or 1600 people and the people who are talking aren't necessarily the ones that like maybe I'm talking to my peer and we're just complaining about it, but we're not actually talking about how we can make it different. Um, so just being able to talk to each other and say like, okay, this is, this is what we can do and and just to decide to make the place better and to continually let people speak their voice and be heard. Okay, I got you. And, and so if, you, if the roles were switched and you were CEO of Zappos, would you have done the same thing? Like invited the, the, the little chase into the room <laughs> yeah. and said, like, come tell me, I heard read your manifesto. Would you do the same? I, honestly, I don't know how Tony wasn't like, so when we got together and talked, uh, I met Tony and Fred at the Container Park. And if it were me, I would have been pretty frustrated about it. Um, I might have even been a little bit belligerent, but I don't know. Oh, uh, oh my, what was this? Man? I've never read the manifesto, well, I mean, so I don't know. You but, know yeah. when, someone, uh, when someone tells you that like, you're doing something that doesn't feel right or you're not doing the best you can do, like, that's, it's really okay. easy to take offense to that, right? Cause, because then like, your idea or your work becomes about you. And right, it's not right. just an idea so, or yeah, work. So you think you probably passion. swallowed his ego pretty well and tried to just say, okay, like, let's look at this from your point of view. And yeah, it's scary how well he does that, actually. Yeah. Like, that was, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I wouldn't have been able to do it. Um, I hope to. Like, I'm, you know, I'm trying right. to move oh, towards yeah. that. Where, Striving for it. Like, yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Far and, away. Uh, I have a uh, group of people where we get together and uh, they learn how to code every week. And so this week I was just like, you guys tell me what's broken with things that, w that we're doing. And for two hours, they told me, like, these are things that we don't like or things that could be better. And the whole time, I'm just like, all right, stay cool. It's going to be okay. <laughs> remember what Tony did. Yeah. Remember. Yeah, remember. Yeah. Just be, be, like, be zen. <laughs> and, and, like, the cool thing is, is that uh, when we had that conversation, everybody saw something they wanted to contribute to. So, like, yeah. rather than me having to run this thing on my own now, everyone's like, this is a piece that I uh, really feel excited about. I want to take it and run with it. So... It enables me to do other things, and it gives them the, the power to do the things that they think could be really cool for what we're doing. Yeah. So, okay, so I picked out, we picked out three things that you said, and I want you to kind of elaborate on them, uh, kind of paraphrased, but basically try to remove the hurdles for others. What do yeah. you mean, and how can that be applied to small businesses outside of Zappos? For sure. Um, so you're always going to have things that like, get in the way. Uh, it could be you know, something... Something as little like, as like not investing in people or, um, I don't know, like maybe you have turnstiles that don't move fast enough at, at Zappos, you know, you have to walk through these turnstiles and maybe they don't move fast enough. Um, how do you remove these hurdles so that people can, can get through the little things and not have to think about the little things so that they can concentrate on what they're actually mm -hmm. totally at work for, yeah. right? Because like, those eat up real. your whole day sometimes they and like you realize really like, yeah I, hate, yeah, I hate those moments. Yeah. Okay. Um, bring your entire self to work. Yes. Uh, so one thing that we're 
you know, that we're really talking about right now is like, how do you make it so people can come to work and not try and hide their vulnerabilities? Because, um, you know, like we kind of talked about earlier. You don't want to be weak, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you don't, like, you don't want to be that guy that's like, I suck at time management, yeah. so don't promote me, right? <laughs> like, and, and, and I mean, like, that's, that's really what happens, right? Like, I hide that I'm not good at time management, so I, I might get right. promoted. Even um, worse, like, I'm the master, yeah. Yeah, right, yeah. Right. Yeah, it's like, oh, yeah, I'm CEO of a business, but I suck at time management. Yeah. Um, it's hard to do that. It's hard to say that I have have problems. That's not just a work thing. That's a life thing, right? Like, right. I don't want anybody to know that I'm broken. Um, yeah, so, yeah. I mean, and we all are, right? We all have these things that we come into to any relationship with. So being able to come in and, like, put your chinks that are in your armor on the table and say, like, this is a thing I'm not good at. But this to... is the whole package, too. So yeah. you've got the good things and the bad, and yeah. here's where the chinks are. Even if it's like you had a bad drive on the way into work, to be able to say, like, I had a bad drive on the way into work, and I'm not going to be fully in this meeting. Um, yeah. I think it's cool because what you see happening is when you put those things out, people who may be better at them offer to help. Like, I'll help you with your time management. Right. Um, and then if you had a bad day and you've got this meeting, like everyone else will kind of pick up the slack because they know that you're having a bad day, right? You don't come and be like, oh, I'm having a bad day. I hate you. Um, but like, I'm having a bad day. Like, help carry that load so that when you have a bad day, like I can right. help carry that load too. Okay, and last one, we've got one minute left, but fix things yourself if you don't like them. Yeah, I think that one speaks for itself. Um, I will say that like, there's that, that old adage that if it ain't broke, don't fix it, yeah. right? Um, and I think that if it ain't broke, you're probably not looking hard enough because they're, everything's broken. You're gonna right? change an old adage yeah. on us? Yeah. Whoa. Uh, it's the 21st century, right? <laughs> it's a like, big step, yeah. are you sure? Yeah. Uh, All right, you guys Chase. are free to use that if you'd like. Um, <laughs> Rewrite the history yeah. books after we get Why Chase not? on the podcast. Yes, okay. Sir. All right, so fix things yourself if you don't like them, bring your entire self to work, and try to remove hurdles for others. Those are all. Have your favorite quotes, kind of paraphrased. But uh, if you guys want to follow Chase, he's local, uh, especially for small business owners. Are you meet kind of meeting with people? Do you mind if I yeah. show your Twitter account yeah, and sure, all that stuff so people get? Okay, so um, he's at Real Chase Adams, and uh, you can follow him on Twitter. And then any other places they can yeah. reach you. Or? If you just Google Real Chase Adams, you can find me wherever you are. I'm probably there. Too. No, that's all. You're, that's that's yeah, your Facebook everywhere. and yeah. your Pinterest yeah. and all that yeah. stuff. Yeah. Okay. My Pinterest on Real Chase Adams. Yeah. Okay. Really cool. <laughs> Do you have Pinterest? Uh, yeah, of course. Okay. Good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, that's fine. Yeah, I, nothing wrong with that. So. Where else would I put all my, my beautiful pictures? All right, guys. Well, Chase, you went through a lot, but you spoke um, for a lot of people, and I think we deserve to give you a cheers. What do you guys think? Woo! All right. <laughs>